let me just play the audio for you to hear. That is Bolas Tinubu's voice. Um, he says something. I don't know. I want you to make sense out of what he said. Yeah, I'm from Nigeria. It's better to give you the true picture of what's going on in Africa. We have terrorism challenges, insecurity challenges that are preventing farmers to even go to their farm. We have problems in Sudan, displacing people. We have problem of climate change, flooding, destroying crops. And we have problem of protectionism. We have problems. It is very important to make it clear and louder here. We have problem of out of ch school children. We have problem of funding free education or giving our children one meal a day in a classroom to even make them pay attention to school. Sometimes I am amazed by how our leaders. Uh, present issues both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria. I don't know who writes their speeches or whether they even have time to study the speeches. I know in advanced countries like US, whenever they are going to prepare a, a very important meeting, they after they can make a draft of their speech three, four, five times. They will look at it, put, make an input. On the last draft, they will take it home, set up the studio, and do rehearsal several times. It shows you a, a serious leader who not only is going to present a speech, but who understands what he is presenting and the impact it is expected to to generate. If any other Nigeria were saying that outside, they will, oh, the, the minions of the government will say, oh, you are bad mouthing the country outside, you are doing this, you are doing that. They will tell you, oh, whatever the country is, sell it well. That is evidence of a very poor salesman. You are outside the country. It is not as if these countries do not know. What you are telling them is not news to them. Some foreign countries know what is happening in Nigeria more than the Nigerian government. They can tell you more about the insurgency, the insecurity, than even our security apparatus. Flogging a dead horse by repeating what is going on in Nigeria does not make much sense. On top of that, the international community, for instance, they don't expect you to come to that forum and begin to read out these things. They expect you to put your house in order. They expect you to sort out some of those issues that can be sorted out and then seek for help. In seeking for help, you do not go to the public and begin to read out statistics of the problem. You meet behind doors with countries that can help you and put your table, your issues there and get the help you need. That kind of thing has no benefit. That kind of public speaking has no benefit of any kind to Nigeria. A person that the world knows now, if you are a corrupt person, some people may argue that it is better for you are worse than a kidnapper. As between a corrupt person who has stolen the country blind and a, a, a person who has 
kidnap one person and collected uh, a few millions. A lot of people will argue that the other person, both of them are evil, but the other evil is better than your own because this evil of amortizing the wealth of the country for yourself, the drove effect is it has killed many and it's still killing many. It has rendered millions of Nigerians important. It has made them men and women to wake up and not to know where to go, not to know what to do, not to know how to get food for their children. That is the consequences of mass theft, mass corruption. So as between you and the other insurgents or the other kidnappers or the other highway robbers, there is not much difference. You may even be worse than them in terms of speaking. They used to say that the person who steals money with a briefcase and the one who steals, who shot, who gets a gun and stands on the road, they are all thieves. And we don't expect one thief to be raiding against the others. Come and become sincere. Become honest. Pause yourself. The reason why a lot of Nigerians loved or caught on onto uh, General Mutara Muhammad was that when he took power, he came up and said, look, I acquired this, I acquired that illegally, I surrender it. He surrendered all the yeah. things he got uh, illegally. And Nigerians appreciated him for his honesty because that is the foundation, that is the basis on which you can begin to rule a country honestly. If you have not paused yourself, nobody, I for one will never trust you. I will never believe that you are there trying to do anything good. You have to pause yourself publicly in the presence and Nigerians will actually applaud you because Nigerians are forgiving. They will say, yes, this man, okay, he was bad before, but he is now, he has turned a new leaf. But when you continue like that, when the people know that you are not clean, nobody takes you serious. Nobody, Nigerians will not take a statement serious. The foreign community whom he's addressing will not take him serious. We don't want bad marketing of Nigeria. It's already known. And as long as these leaders are there, their statements are, are taken with a pinch of salt. I'm sure some people will go back and laugh behind him and say, look at these people, look at this, uh, look at this man. He's talking things that we know even more than him. This cannot entice us if it is investment he wants in Nigeria. That is a minus. That is a nobody point. Will take him, nobody will a... take him seriously. Honestly, nobody that is will the point take him I wanted seriously. to make. Mm. So that kind of thing, I don't know who advises the president, Tunubu, or some of our leaders that we come to this level to go and be what, washing your dirty linen in the public in this manner. The marketing, that's what is called the marketing of the country by the person who is supposed to be the number one marketer yeah. of the country. Yeah, absolutely correct. Engaging in the marketing of the country. That yeah. is uh, irresponsible. Yeah, honestly, Barista, thank you so very much. In fact, you said what I wanted to say, actually. So, um, yeah, actually, that is the real the marketing. In fact, I don't know who is advising this man. And even if they are advising him, he's an adult. He's been a, he was one time, two time governor of Lagos de Fogosi. The issue, understand that uh, there are things the leader is not supposed to say in the public. Like you, like you earlier, you earlier pointed out, these are supposed to, whatever he said was supposed to be uh, behind, the, behind the scene in a, within a, in a closed door session. For God's sake, not, in, not to the public. You, 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 you want to, that, the, G, the, G, the G20 meeting, the essence of G, all the Gs, where you have the GA, the G7, the G20, the G5, or whatever. Anytime you have you have that name, that such meeting of Gs, um, the basic or the primary reason for such meeting is business. It's for business. 
to attract business mo mutual interest to each other to sell yourself to sell your poten your potentials to the other person that is the essence do, like you like we say in economics trade by butter you go there to give and to receive from someone gift out something someone will take from you and you receive from the other now tell me after this nonsense this man spills as our president who will want to give to us what they, uh, nobody will want to give to us because they will just be what are we getting in return they don't have anything the demand mm -hmm. the, the country is just empty it's all about everything is just negativity. We cannot invest there. We cannot do anything there because when we if we try to invest our money, our resources can, will never be secured because of insecurity. And you talked about restitution. Now, the General Murtala did that restitution. Now, not in all cases. Me, I'm not that kind of person who believes in restitution in all cases. General Murtala did it. Okay, it was good for him. Restitution is good if you are convinced to do it on your own, by yourself. Some of them, instinct guides them to do that. Some of them, they won't have peace until they do it. Some people, they will not have peace until they restitute. If that is your kind of person, if you, did that, if you don't restitute, you, don't, you won't have, then you have, you'll, be free, you'll be compelled to restitute because you need that peace. So, but I am not that kind of a person who gives a blanket blanket judgment on people there are people and there are times i believe in there are people who will who must restitute and some they don't have to restitute all they need, need to do is to turn a new leaf turn turn in turn a new page of your life where you okay you've done in the past forget about the past don't visit the past from now henceforth from the from the present moving forward you do something different. Do it differently. One should expect that from Bola Tinubu. I didn't expect restitution from him. Let's even assume, okay, um, he, he, he did all, he, he, uh, he, he, he doesn't care about restitution, but he wants to be a new person. He wants to do the right thing. That's fine. But the unfortunate aspect of it is Bola Tinubu is not only not restituting, he is not changing. He is recalcitrant. He's unrepentant. He is obstinate. <laughs> Excuse me. He is just adamant with all the criticism. He doesn't care. Rather, he is digging deeper into corruption. Sure. Sometimes ago on this show, you you pointed out how he is he sold. Uh, how uh, not uh, how NMPC is being sold to his own company, Owando, uh, a company owned by his nephew. Uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it, the company is a de facto Tinubu's company. Uh, so uh, look at the the, what, the, uh, the 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 largest contract Nigeria ever awarded road con construction contract that Nigeria ever awarded it was awarded to Tinubu by proxy. Was it, he awarded such contract by proxy, fifteen billion dollars worth of contract. And is that does that do you see a light at the end of the tunnel in this man's life? There is no light. There is no there is nothing that points us to the to to Tunubu's be Tunubu being a changed person. No, rather he is doubling down his corrupt practices. His corrupt the. Corruption. This man is epitomized in corruption. This man is his DNA reeks of corruption. So he is unrepentant, and that is he is that kind of a, he is, he is that person that the Bible, the book of Romans says. I think Romans chapter one or so. Um, is it uh, chapter one verse eight of? I I can't remember. I, I don't eight or nine. Oh uh, no no no. Sorry if I'm misquoting. I think it's a, in the book of Romans. I think it should be chapter one, but I can't remember the verse right now. That says, say, because they refuse to retain God in their hearts, God has given them up to a reprobate mind to continue in those things that are unseemly. That is what Tinubu is. That man has refused to retain God in his heart. That man has refused to change because I do not understand. You have made. 
Let me be frank with you. They, 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 they categorize uh, Dangote as the Africa's richest man. I am telling you, Dangote is not richer than Bueda and Tinubu. I am telling you, even if Dangote, there are people that Dangote is, Dangote is not richer than in Nigeria there that are unofficially, discreetly, far richer than Angote. And I, I believe Tinubu is one of them. This man, you have amassed wealth, stupendous wealth for yourself, and you keep amassing wealth. What else do you want? I expect someone like that to actually turn a new leaf and begin at least use his, his, the, last, the last days of his life to, to actually engrave his legacy in the history of Nigeria by being at least being one of the best leaders Nigeria ever produced. But no, who side? He wouldn't do that because he is reprobate, just like the Book of Romans says. That is just it. His heart is, he has, his heart is already seared. His conscience is seared, just like a hot iron. So, um, and uh, that, is, that, is just, that is just the reality. It's so, so, so unfortunate. He just demarketed us. Tell me which investor will come to will come to Nigeria to invest. Obviously not. You have just said it all. It's so unfortunate, Barista. All right. Let's move um to the next topic, Barista.